Over three billion years ago, life first appeared in the seas of an infant Earth. Over 400 million years ago, living creatures left the protective waters to begin life on land. About two million years ago, the earliest man walked upright on the land. 204 years ago, James Watt made improvements to the steam engine and began the age of technology, forever altering the course of man. 66 years ago, two men named Wright again changed the pattern of life on this planet. Today, men first left the protective atmosphere of Earth to walk in the vacuum of the moon. And we may wonder, will our lives ever be the same? Will future generations look back from the Earth, from another planet, from another star, and say, this was the beginning? Armstrong, Michael Collins, Edwin Buzz Aldrin. Three men to represent the culmination of a dream and the beginning of a new concept of reality. So they rose through the atmosphere toward the open vacuum, a trip not only through space, but through time, toward a world untouched by the evolutionary processes of Earth, a journey that was to be a door to the future and a window on the past. Now in Earth orbit, it was time for translunar injection the start of the trip out. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, slightly less than one minute to ignition, and everything is go. Right here. Ignition. We confirm ignition, and the thrust is go. The 
burn completed, on their way to the moon. The next step was to jettison their launch vehicle, turn around and dock with the lunar module, still attached to the third stage. Pulling free now of the useless third stage, they continue their coasting flight. Hi, Houston, Apollo 11. How many miles out do you have it now? Uh, roughly about uh, 50,000. It's a beautiful sight. So they coasted toward the moon. As Jason sought the Golden Fleece to regain a kingdom, these three sought a cargo of knowledge to gain a kingdom for all men, a kingdom of infinite frontier. Then on July 19, 1969, Apollo 11 prepared for LOI, Lunar Orbit Insertion. Hi, 11, this is Houston. Uh, you are go for LOI, over. Roger, go for LOI. And we've had loss of signal as Apollo 11 goes behind the moon. Now those of us on the Earth waited for the radio signal to be acquired as Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin emerged from their first transit behind the moon. Apollo 11, Apollo 11, this is Houston. How do you read? Clean you loud and clear, Houston, how are you? The next day, July 20th, marked the beginning of a new era. Mike Collins, alone in the command module called Columbia, watched as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin undocked the lunar module called Eagle. As the Eagle rotated slowly, Collins inspected it carefully. For now, it was time for the descent to the surface of the moon and into history. A separation maneuver had placed the command module below the Eagle, so that half an orbit later, there would be a safe clearance for DOI, Descent Orbit Insertion. Armstrong and Aldrin looked down at Columbia as they passed over the landing site. Eagle, Houston, you're a go for DOI, over. Roger, go for DOI. Do you have LOS and AOS on? Roger. Both looking good, going over the hill. Again, Eagle and Columbia passed behind the moon. When they emerged, Eagle would be on the way down, awaiting the signal that would begin the powered descent and end with man's first lunar landing. Eagle, Houston, we rig you now. You're a go for PDI, over. Roger, understand. At the Earth, right out our front window.
20,000 feet above the moon. Eagle's descent engine ignited. At this point, the Eagle rolled onto its back to give the landing radar surface acquisition. Now the crew was flying blind, hurtling toward the lunar surface, only their instruments and the voice of mission control telling them where they were, until the slow pitch maneuver brought the lunar horizon to their view. to Mike Collins, alone in the orbiting Columbia. Siegel, is that tranquility over? Yeah, I heard the whole thing. Well, it's a good show. Tranquility, uh, be advised there are lots of smiling faces in this room and all over the world, over. Well, there are two of them up here. Roger, it was a beautiful job, you guys. And don't forget one in the command module. Roger. gravity of the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin donned their equipment and prepared to explore this stark, lonely world. Uh, do you think you can open the hatch at this pressure, about uh, 0.12 PSI? Uh, we're going to try it. Roger. Uh, the hatch is coming open. Guided by Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, in his bulky suit, worked his way through the Eagle's forward hatch. How am I doing? You're doing fine. Okay, Houston, I'm on the porch. Roger, Neil. Get 
the picture on the TV. Um, uh, at the foot of the ladder, the lamb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. Armstrong next set about taking pictures and collecting a contingency sample of lunar soil. Then it was time for Aldrin to join him. Are you ready? All set. Now I want to uh, back up and partially close the hatch. Making sure not to lock it on my way out. <laughs> Pickly good thought. That's our home for the next couple hours. We want to take good care of it. Then the first man on the moon read a plaque attached to a leg of the eagle. A plaque representing the philosophy of a nation that itself, less than two centuries earlier, had been thought by many so-called practical men an impractical dream. Underneath it says, Dear men from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon, July 1969, A.D. It came in peace for all mankind. It has the, the crew members' signatures and the signature of the President of the United States. And as we watch them plant the flag of the United States in the lunar soil, we perhaps wondered what dream dreamt today by what impractical dreamer will be tomorrow's reality. Columbia, this is Houston reading you loud and clear, over. Yeah, reading you loud and clear, how's it going? Oh, it's beautiful, Mike, it really is. Oh, geez, that's great. Is the lighting halfway decent? Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes. Beautiful, just beautiful. 
Now Buzz Aldrin developed the choreography for future lunar explorers. The steps with which those who follow will traverse the moon. All right, you do have to be uh, rather careful uh, to keep track of where your center of mass is. Sometimes it takes about two or three paces to uh, make sure that uh, you've got your feet underneath you. And about two or three or maybe four easy paces can bring you to the fairly smooth uh, stop. Like a football player, you just have to put out to the side and cut a little bit. As Armstrong and Aldrin set about the business of collecting samples and setting up experiments, Earth observed them. Heart rates on both crewmen averaging uh, between 90 and 100. Flight surgeon reports they're in great shape. Watching their loping, skating stride, it was as though we peered through a lens that distorted time itself. Houston, I don't think there's any hope for using this uh, leveling device to come up with an accurate level. Uh, Roger, 11, uh, press on. I believe the ball is right in the middle now. Wonderful. Take a picture for a move. So they went about their tasks of exploration. Aliens on a distant world. And, strangely enough, they looked as if they belonged there. time to leave the dusty lunar plane, stow the experiment, samples, and photographs to be returned to Earth. Next, jettison the now useless equipment, clean house in the Eagle, 
and rest for the next day's liftoff and rendezvous. Columbia, this is the backup crew. Our congratulations to yesterday's performance and our prayers are with you for the rendezvous. Over. Thank you, Jim. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Jim. For liftoff, the ascent engine would push the Eagle into orbit. For this one maneuver, this engine would have to work. There was no alternative. We listened to the countdown from the moon. Our guidance recommendation uh, is pings, and you're cleared for takeoff. Roger, understand. We're number one on the runway. Parted Tranquility Base, pushed toward orbit by the ascent engine. Up and away from man's first firm extraterrestrial foothold, across the harsh, pitted landscape of the moon. Then, following rendezvous procedures developed through Gemini and Apollo, Eagle drew nearer and nearer to Columbia. Mike Collins watched the Eagle's climb, its flashing beacon of friendly signal. For hours, he had kept his vigil. Now his companions were returning. Control thrusters firing, Eagle and Columbia moved together for docking, the last movement of their lunar duet. After the docking, to transfer the crew and their precious samples of the moon to Columbia, the ascent stage of the Eagle was jettisoned. It was time for the final burn in lunar orbit, trans-Earth injection. TEI. Again, we waited. Waited for Apollo 11 to emerge from behind the moon. Coming home. Hello, Apollo 11. Houston, how did it go? Over. Time to open up the LRL doors, Charlie. Roger. We got you coming home. 
On the Way Home. Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. Then on July 24th, the crew of Apollo 11 witnessed a final sunset over Earth's horizon and prepared for entry. Uh, you're cleared for landing. Scotch gears down and locked. See you later. the three men wearing biological isolation garments entered the mobile quarantine facility and their earthly confinement. for the moon, man had touched his destiny. But to attain that destiny, we must take firm hold of that which we now only touch, then reach again. For these men, the first, were only the first. On the moon, Earth exists as a warm, colorful sanctuary in the airless black of space. But in our planetary system, Earth is the anomaly, the strange environment. And now it is time, time for man to break free of his provincial planet, to expand physically and mentally into the future, into the universe, into reality. And this was the beginning. <laughs> 